The Monerotopia guest segment is sponsored by CakeWallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. CakeWallet is open source and you always control your own keys. Pavel, how's it going, man? Yeah, great. How are you guys? Good, good, good. Thank, thank you for jumping on. Appreciate it. I wanted, I wanted to bring you on to uh, get people excited about Monerotopia. So I've been bringing on various guests, people that will be speakers at Monerotopia. You were there last year. Uh, you brought, um, you know, a, a tremendous. You, you were, you were a big part of the conference last year. Bring, bringing your vibe. Uh, the crypto anarchist vibe. So appreciative of having you participating again this year. And just wanted to get you up here so people can meet you. Thanks all for the invitation. I'm really looking forward to um, the next Monerotopia. I definitely will come. I'm already in Latin America now, so I'm just uh, I, I just have to move like uh, to the north. I'm just in Paraguay okay. now. <laughs> oh, you're in Paraguay. It's pretty far, That's by it. the way. I'm in Paraguay. Yeah. Like almost the same time zone like you now. Like I have like a 1 p.m. 33, so not a big difference. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's pretty far to Mexico. I have to fly like six hours to uh, to Panama and then another maybe three, four hours to Mexico. So long flight. But I will come, don't worry. <laughs> oh, fantastic, fantastic. I know South, South America is a big place, right? <laughs> <laughs> Paraguay, Argentina, yeah. other side of the world, man. That's part of the reason why we moved it to Mexico City, because uh, as much as I wanted to do it in Buenos Aires, it's just so far for so many people. Um, yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Uh, so many people, I mean, uh, especially for American, but not for Latinos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, can, you, can you give us any, uh, any hints what you might be talking about this year? Yeah, uh, very good question. Man, I have like a two topics, uh, recent new cool topics, and maybe we should discuss which one will be the best uh, for, okay. for this conference. So maybe let's start with the first topic. And the first topic is, is the, the title of this presentation is the Will the new rich and influential libertarian and the of the state divorce from dystopia? I'm going to explain it. What does it mean exactly? Okay. Wait, so your really, sound your or, sound is getting a little um your sound's getting a little fuzzy right now, but I don't know if you changed something over there. Yeah, try to keep maybe keep the yeah. uh the phone jack okay. in or something. Okay. 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 Um, so so I'm going to explain it like uh, uh, the my first topic, which may be interesting very interesting for you. So the this topic is about um it should be like a Philosophical, future, like a futurist, futurologist presentation. So basically, it's predictions. And the thing is that in these days, uh, or it is quite likely that in the future, uh, like a group of people, especially Bitcoin people, will be rich. It's pretty likely. Everybody, everybody believes in uh, like a Bitcoin crypto is going to the moon. So quite likely. A lot of crypto people in the following years will be will be rich, and rich basically means influential. So if you're rich, you have also like a political power. You can change the system. You can do a lot of things just because you're rich. And what is quite interesting about about this topic is that uh, that. Uh, most of these rich people or most of the crypto people in these days are libertarians or like uh, anarchist crypto anarchists. So basically it means in the future, when you're just thinking about it, in the future, like most rich people will be libertarians and crypto anarchists. Are you aware of this fact? It just, it's just happening. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, 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 yeah, so, so, because of the current situation, okay, let's, let's consider like a, like a Silicon Valley, uh, like a California, most rich people maybe are Democrats, but it's, it's, it's changing over the time, and it's very likely, it's very likely, it's almost 100%, that in the future, the richest people, or one of the, the richest people in the people, 
And not everybody, but most of them are libertarians of cryptanalysis. So let's consider what does it mean? It means that the most, not only the richest, but also the most influential people will be anarchist or crypto anarchist. Okay, so this, this, this is exactly what I think will happen. And if you are just uh, thinking about it, it's, it's very likely. At the same time, at the same time, our society is going to like a dystopian direction. You know that like a, a lot of, uh, a lot of bonds, uh, like a censorship, you know, like a, a social score. Technocracy. Mm -hmm. technocracy technocracy so so basically we can see like in two directions we can see that the the mainstream society is going to dystopia dystopia direction but at the same time we uh, like we can see the the anarchies and crypto anarchies libertarians will be the richest people in the world so 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 and now back to my original title of the presentation the my title of the presentation is Will the new rich and influential libertarians and crypto anarchists save the world from dystopia? And that's exactly what. <laughs> so basically, basically, I'm, I will, I'm going, I'm going to uh, talk if all of us, you know, like uh, libertarians, crypto anarchists, who will be rich, I hope soon, <laughs> mm -hmm. or in the following years, if we can, like, uh, save the world from dystopia, because. In this situation, it means like uh, we will have not only like the money, but it means we will have like a power. Like it means also political power. And this is like a really interesting topic. And I never, I, I, I didn't find like any, like a, any papers or any analysis of, of, about this. And I did some analysis. So, so this is like a first topic. Yeah. So, will the I love it. Will the new Will the new rich and influential libertarian and cryptocurrency save the world from dystopia? Because I don't I, know. I strongly feel, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, no, no, that, that's, it's 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 a fantastic it's a fantastic thing to talk about. It's a great it's you know it's a great thesis, great great question, really, right? I think I think you're spot on. Uh, I mean, look at Satoshi, right? Rich richest man in the world or will be or i think he currently is yeah. right rich would be the richest person in the world right ross albright right would be would be one of the most successful entrepreneurs if if he um wasn't put in prison with a double life sentence and yeah. silk road was, was still so, out there functioning um you have peter Thiel, right who's already moving you have elon musk these guys that are already like on the fringe and then you have all these new crypto people up oh, i did we lose him did we lose pavel Oh, he's coming in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, no, I, I, I definitely right yeah. as as Monero grows up in, in mark market cap, um, you're enriching uh, libertarian aligned people, anarchists, right? Anarchists, really. Uh, so I think the real question then becomes is right. So they'll they'll have these resource. You'll have these very intelligent people that are very principled uh, that will have these resources now and these tools. And then I think the question becomes is uh, how powerful is the, this dark force that they'll be up against? Is it just a matter of having money and having these tools? Or does this dark force have so much power beyond money um, that even with that influence and that newfound money, that the world is just so deeply corrupted and controlled by this dark anti-liberty force that wants to control the people, control the populace, because they have a lot of technology on their side, will they be able to snuff out and and prevail over all these wealthy libertarians that have opted out that are using these apparent what appear to be unstoppable tools? That's exactly. really what the like question it, comes down just, to, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just think about like a Satoshi Nakamoto you mentioned, like a Satoshi Nakamoto has one million of Bitcoin. And imagine like a, what, how can you change the world with one million Bitcoin? You know, basically like this guy can lobby or can corrupt all, all politicians in the world. and can change the political society in all countries, you know, just like it's so easy, you know. <laughs> when he wants, of course. Uh, but we are just talking about this possibility, you know. Like, uh, so, so I, I'm going to talk about this possibility that um, just the fact that uh, like a crypto is going to the moon 
and it's only a question of time. I mean, especially like a Bitcoin. Uh, I think that crypto anarchists, uh, libertarians, people who believe in crypto will be definitely like the most rich people in our society, which means influential people who would who who can change uh, who can change the system and who will do that for sure you know so 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 uh so this is my first topic i would like to tell it. i i see i would like it um, I and my second and my second topic my second top, topic it's it's about like a like an opt out uh like a, i have i have like a com, like a completely new recent presentation about like opt out of the system but uh, this presentation is for non-Americans, <laughs> you know, because for okay. like a U.S. citizen, like uh, it's not pretty tough. So I'm not sure if it, like because I think like most people at the modern topia would be like a U.S. citizens. So uh, so I'm not sure if this like a second topic will be the the best. But my, my second topic is for basically for non-U.S. citizens how to opt out. And that's that's a lot of like you know what you specialize in and what you live by. Yeah. So sp spreading yeah, that with yeah, yeah. I just pulled up pulled up your website here. For those of you who don't know Pavel, I mean, this guy is uh, as as far as we know one of one of the if not the most legit crypto anarchists out there. Right, has been walking the walk for for many years. Uh, one of the founders of. Uh, Par Parallel Polis, uh, which hosts the Monero uh, Con conference Monarch and many yeah. other. Uh, Monarch, Monarch, Monarch Comp, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, Co-founders of, of that institution way ahead of its time that houses the first cafe to ever officially accept Bitcoin from back in, what was that, 2011 or something, right? Like, yeah. Um, so yeah, if you if you don't know Pavel, uh, you, you're, you're, you're kind of a noob. <laughs> so so yeah. he will be at Minerotopia. Um, he's from Slovakia. He, uh, you can pull up his website. It's the opportunist.global. He specializes in helping people how to opt out, right? Like you're basically a consultant that teaches people how to opt out. Is that is that a fair way to to explain your 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 services? Yeah. So 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 um, so basically, it's like uh, it's like a full package. What we offer to our customer, we help them to like uh. uh to renounce their like a citizenship or residency. In case of the US citizen, it's like a like a citizenship because their tax duty you, tax duty is associated with like a citizenship. Uh, so we help customer to uh, to get like a better residency, especially tax residency. Uh, we focused on Paraguay, Uruguay, Panama, and um, probably Costa Rica very soon. So we have like a multiple multiple destination, especially Paraguay is really really popular because to get a uh, tax residency in Paraguay, you don't you don't need to leave the major recovery of time, which you have to in the most most countries. Also, we create like a companies, offshore companies for customers in many different countries, and uh, we also open like a crypto friendly bank accounts. Now the super popular like bank account is like a premium banking. Uh, in Georgia, in Georgia, Bank of Georgia, like Georgia, the country, you know, not Georgia, the state. Uh, and this is like really popular um, because you can you can have you can have the best like a uh, payment cards, and it's crypto friendly. You can have like a when you use like a local Georgia exchange, and it costs almost nothing. So, and also we, we are helping customer to get a good healthcare insurance. So basically. Uh, so that's basically just and what is quite interesting like we most of our customers are like a digital nomads who are traveling all the time uh, but still we have like a many people who permanently live at one place like for example in the Europe you know and these people they can still opt out of the system uh, they can still in Europe for example because they are citizens of Europe but they don't need like residency, so they they, they don't need to pay like a health for like obligatory health for insurance or social insurance, and uh, they can they can leave from like the loans, for example, for the, the people who cannot afford to move all the time. Uh, we are helping uh, to set up like a some structures how to leave 
uh, from crypto logs, which is pretty interesting. Like, uh, so you can you can use your crypto as a collateral, like a, like a A B E for example, and you can leave it, leave, leave from it. And uh, it doesn't just sell you crypto. It's like really 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 cool. Yeah, Libertad. So, so it's like a, oh, it's, sorry. It's like yeah, a very so complex. It's a very complex top out plan. Uh, it includes like many different things, but the goal is just to be as much as free as possible. And like I said, you, you don't just talk the talk, you walk the walk, you, you use all these things, you live by it. Um, if you look at his kind of his resume over here, where he, he has his residencies in Estonia and Paraguay, he has his companies in Wyoming and Slovakia for crypto reasons. Um, he's listing, you know, all, all the different kind of tools he uses, his crypto cards, Zappos and to, to, to basically use crypto international health care provider. Are you paying with crypto for this William and Russell, uh, healthcare, this international, do you pay them with crypto? No, um, I, I don't know. I don't know any like uh, international health insurance provider, uh, that accept crypto. I know there is one local one for the like uh, uh, that works in the U.S. like uh, for U.S. citizens. I can't remember the name of this like a uh, like a U.S. hopper, uh, and this can be paid in crypto. But I don't know any international health in, um, insurance provider that accepts crypto. If you know such uh, like a yeah, no, I, don't just know. Let me know. I don't know. You you, yeah, you would be the I first you would anyone. be the first to know. I'm asking you because you you would be the first. Yeah, if anybody yeah. knows it'd be it'd be you. Um, I think the newest one is Crowd Health, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, exactly. But exactly, but this one is for the U.S. citizen only, not for for foreigners. I think. Or it's just too expensive for foreigners. And another is my question for you, by the way. Like uh, my Slovak company, we use like a uh, we we exchange regularly uh, Euro to Monero. And as you know, like uh, Kraken decided to delist uh, Monero for the EU. So do you know, yes. like, you do know, and, and but, but anyway, I'm really happy that Monero went back uh, to the original value despite this fact. <laughs> so, so my question is, do you know, like, uh, in, I, I need to look in an official way, so it has to be like a centralized crypto exchange. Do you know any centralized crypto exchange that basically accept deposit inside of the EU and it supports Monero? Like a Monero-friendly crypto exchange in the EU? That's my question. Well, how about like instant exchanges? Does that count? Instant exchanges? Which one? Instant There's exchanges. A bunch of different, yeah. bunch of different instant oh, okay. exchanges. I think um, like like Trocador, Exelix. Um, is that what you're talking about, or I don't know? If yeah, 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 the, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. I know Trocador. I know these instant uh, crypto exchanges, but I need like a fiat deposit. Oh, fiat deposit. So to go from yeah. from fiat like to Monero, from, I don't know. Tux. From Europe. Yeah. Yeah. From fiat to Monero. Tux. Yeah. It's probably not Tux. possible. Tux, do you, Tux, you might have some insight into that, right? Doesn't maybe Cake DFX? Does... Yeah, yeah, we have DF... in Cake. We have one called DFX that actually lets you do up to uh, like 900,000 euros uh, without KYC. You can connect your bank account and buy Monero, Monero directly on there. Yeah, okay, can, can, can tell me the, what's, what's called the name? It's called DFX, DFX.Swiss. Okay, You'll see DFX. it in Cake Wallet. It's built, it's built into yeah. Cake Wallet under the yeah, bar, I'm like right? a, Yeah, I'm a super active user of Cake Wallet, so I will definitely check it. Yeah, see if that one works okay. for you. I can't, I've never been able to try it because I'm in the U.S., but I've heard for all the people that do live in Europe who can use it, it's pretty great for them. Yeah. Like, on, good, one, good information. One, on one side, I'm, I'm like, quite happy that, like, a more Monero is, like, a, going away from all these centralized crypto exchanges. So it's going, like, a, like a full underground. It's, it, it's becoming, like, full underground, like a, like a cryptocurrency. But at the same time, I still... I still have to have like a my company is in this like a EU hell, and and has to and I have to find some way how to how to like change like a euros uh, to uh, to Monero. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, hopefully those those on and off ramps continue to, you know, new ones grow, right? So um, maybe if maybe even more decentralized versions. Obviously, things like lo local Monero have been shut down, but there's there's other things popping up. Um, Neil is tipped a dollar twenty three checkout. Uh, KYC not dot me for a list of exchanges centralized or not mm -hmm. to trade Monero for crypto or fiat. Yeah, that is a great resource. KYC not dot me shows all 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 the ways in which you can yeah, yeah, trade I know, I know. into Monero. Um, I, I do want to mention this. This uh, they. Oh, I just want to mention this. Uh, Liber Libertad tip ten dollars. Pa Pavel is one of the most legit cypherpunks I've met. His ongoing work on actually finding freedom in an increasingly unfree world is an inspiration to us all. I'm excited to listen to what he has to say this year at Mexico City. In Mexico City, be there or miss out. Yeah, C couldn't agree more, Libertad. Couldn't agree more. You, you got yeah. some fans here, man. You got some. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I'm really looking forward to uh, Monotopia at Mexico. Yeah, uh, that's that's the reason why I now every year I end up in in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, I, what do you think about uh, Tux and I were talking about this this idea of trying to grow Monero in Mexico, right? We we do the conference there more for geo geo uh, strategic reasons in terms of location right and it's very easy for people to get to uh but it's perhaps not the best place to try to grow monero right it doesn't have super high inflation like argentina um you know the pace is relatively stable but that being said there does seem to be in in their culture this there, you know, uh, a cash based culture, right? All, all like a lot of the Mexicans are that are out there on the street selling things. They, you know, they prefer to accept cash in pesos. So there's this, this cash culture, this free and open market culture. You could go on the street and sell anything, right? And there's this mentality that you, that people should be allowed to do that. So there, there is that culture there. But just curious, like your thoughts, do you think Mexico can be a, a, a good petri dish for growing something like Monero, Monero adoption. <laughs> I have like Tough a question. stupid answer, like a, like a, yeah, maybe because of narcos, yes. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. A tool is a no, tool, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But w one interesting thing about Mexico, you probably you, you probably don't know, is that. Um, in Mexico, there are like ATM machines, and not only for withdrawals, but also for deposits. So basically, you can deposit money and send money like uh, anywhere you want. And what is quite interesting, like uh, uh, in uh, Mexican ATM machines, you can basically deposit like a physical cash and send it to any person fully anonymously, which definitely this doesn't work in anywhere in Europe, but it works in Mexico. So for example, oh, when you want... When you want to buy drugs, when you like listen to this, when you want to buy drugs in Mexico, uh, nobody nobody cares about crypto. Nobody cares about like a cash. Like a drug dealer will write you, uh, please deposit money to this bank account, and so you can just visit like any physical ATM machine that accept anonymous anonymous deposit. You just push. You just put really? a lot of cash to this like a uh, ATM machine with deposit, and he received received it anonymously in a few seconds. So basically, Mexico is a full of ATM machines that accept anonymous deposit. No, well that that that, that sounds like an amazing potential on ramp, like local Monero style, where you can buy Monero yeah, yeah. anonymously yeah. with cash, right? Yeah, I didn't know any country where you can like uh, just physically come to any like a uh, ATM machine, put like a uh, physical cash and send it. I just you just you just like uh, write the like recipient uh, uh, bank account number of the the person, but it's basically like a deposit, no KYC, no personal information, nothing. You just send it in a fully anonymous way. <laughs> so maybe that's the reason why like a Mexican. And they, and they and Mexicans use this uh you do use this way of sending money like pretty often so maybe that's the reason why like crypto is not so so much popular in Mexico because 
like a bank support, like an anonymous sending of money, you know. <laughs> that is news to me. Like I said, I'm thinking like could couldn't that potentially be be utilized by those who want to sell Monero for cash in Mexico? That could be a great way to yeah. to sell Monero for cash, have people sending you pesos exactly. like, by, via these ATMs or these bank many uh, my, bank tellers. Many of my colleagues and friends, uh, they successfully started to use Havana. You know Havana, definitely. Yes. 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 Uh, so, so it seems like a, Havana is really, like, it's pretty good and it works like uh, in many European countries now and for sure it, it could work like a uh, in Mexico, I think. Like, uh, yeah. But these like anonymous bank deposits are just big competition for Monero, I think. <laughs> that's that's really interesting. That's really interesting. That's that's yeah. got me thinking. Uh crypto talk tip fifty cents. After reading Roger Ver's hijacking Bitcoin and hearing comments from influential BTC Maxis like Max Kaiser, I believe there eventually may be attempts by BTC oligarchs for governments in the West to ban all other crypto thoughts on the probabilities. So this guy's saying he thinks, you know, there might be some attempt to essentially ban cryptos like Monero uh, since, since Bitcoin has been co-opted. Uh, so the same people that have like co-opted Bitcoin will now attempt to ban the others. Yeah. Like to be sincere, really uh, understand this fear and it may happen. I hope it, it won't, but it may happen for sure. Uh, like That's especially in Europe, not 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 sure about like the US, but especially in Europe, uh, like a Bitcoin maxis are really really strong. I mean, uh, all Bitcoin conferences in Europe are max. A Bitcoin conference are strictly like a Bitcoin maxi conference where where they totally hate like a, any crypto. Uh, which is uh, which is not Bitcoin. Maybe Monero is the only exception. Like a bit for me, Bitcoin maxis. There, are, there is like a there is like a Bitcoin, which is like a really good coin. There is all every like all everything else is like a shit coin, and there is Monero. You know, like this is like a typical uh, Bitcoin maxi uh, like board. And yeah, like it's it's it's. It, it's likely that something like like that may happen in the future, but for example, what is quite interesting in Argentina or in Latin America, uh, we don't know like uh, these Bitcoin maximalists. Like for example, there is like a lot Bitcoin, uh, this biggest uh, Bitcoin conference in Argentina, and these people, they are definitely not Bitcoin maximalists, and they and they like all all altcoins or any other coins, you know, cryptocurrency. So they are not so strict. But I can imagine that, like uh, that Bitcoin maxi, like a uh, whales or super rich Bitcoin Bitcoin maxi people can just lobby politicians and and enforce like a uh, like a ban on anything what what is not Bitcoin. It's likely, but mm. this does this doesn't affect like a Monero at all because you know Monero even now is like almost outlawed. You know, like uh, <laughs> no one cares. <laughs> So it's, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's in, already in being Europe, attacked. In Europe, yeah, in Europe, we we are actually using Monero despite the fact that that all centralized crypto exchanges that uh, they delisted Monero. You know, it just mean nothing. We are still using it like it. just we, we have just switched to underground. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm br I'm bringing up XMR Bazaar. I'm curious. Are you familiar with XMR Bazaar? Because it's 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 been yeah, growing yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. You Bro, told almost, me about, about about this project. Yeah, cool. So we hit like a thousand listings. Um, it's a platform where people can buy and sell goods and goods and services directly, peer to peer, with Monero, with escrow built into it. Um, I think it, I think it's a good you know a good platform for for you to to, to perhaps help spread right when uh, trying to teach people about opting out. I, I think that's the best way to opt out, right? Is you try to earn earn in Monero and then you try to live off Monero, right? So you're not even then yeah. dealing with fiat. You 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 uh, told me last time when you when you were planning to launch this project and I'm super happy that it's already like a uh, uh, running and there are so many uh, like listings. Uh, yeah. So 
thanks a lot for like uh, uh, telling me this information because today I'm going to uh, to enter like uh, some new listings. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Sure. Um, yeah, and I'm going to promote it. Yeah, I'm super happy that uh, such pro project like this one. Cool. Fantastic, man. If and if you ever have any ideas, things that you think we should implement to make it better, to make it function better. Uh, for people that are actually trying to opt out, let me know. Let me know. Obviously, all, all yeah, ears. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, you may... Go ahead. No. Okay. Go ahead. So, you may can ask for like a, the legal details. How did you solve it finally? If it is not, I'm sorry, not but... like a, about the legal legal details behind this project. Like, uh, how did you solve it? Well, I mean, right now that, you know, there's, it's, it's, it's not a decentralized platform, right? Um, it's it is a cent it is centralized, but no Monero goes through the platform at all. All transactions are completely peer to peer, so it's basically no difference than a Craigslist. It's just a list a listings mm -hmm. platform where people can list goods and services for sale. Uh, there's a terms of service that's saying they need to follow the rules of their jurisdiction, right? You can't go on here and list. And start selling heroin for for Monero in in New York City, right? We're gonna we're gonna boot that listing, and we're saying that all users are responsible for following the laws in their jurisdiction. And then any transactions that are made, the platform doesn't touch Monero at all. When you when you buy a book here uh, online on XMR Bazaar mm -hmm. for Monero, you're sending Monero directly from from your account to the seller's Monero address. Um, so. Yeah. So, that that is the so you don't have like the, a yeah go ahead so this is like a really good so you don't have like some like an extra legal responsibility exactly we're, we we ne we're not a we can't be labeled a money transmitter right we never we never touch anybody's monero at all we're yeah. just a listing service where people can say hey i'm interested in selling this for monero or i'm interested in buying this for monero bringing people together Really no difference than Craigslist with Monero addresses attached, right? And then we do have a multi-sig built into it. And once again, that multi-sig is non-custodial. Um, mm -hmm. XMR Bazaar never holds your Monero, but there's a, a it's a, a third party, a mediator. And the mediator is just kind of like uh, Haveno, right? So there's mediators mm -hmm. that can act, uh, that can play a role in, in a transaction and uh, they could be the the second signature to a transaction, so it's it's based on you know a, a multi signature escrow system, where the there's the buyer, the seller, and the mediator, and the mediator's mm -hmm. signature basically determines what direction the Monero goes in if there's a dispute. But that mediator is an XMR Bazaar, so there's so XMR Bazaar never touches anybody's Monero, and we we don't collect any fees. We don't collect any fees on people's transactions obviously because there's no way we can right it's it's all peer-to-peer -peer, so there can't be an argument there that we're profiting from the transactions that are being made and that's kind of the the legal structure we have i think i think this is like a really good approach because it just means you, you will be alive long like a really <laughs> unless unless the other platforms you know like uh, like the dark markets and so uh, yeah cool so good luck with this project and i'm going to and I'm going to list uh, my my items today. So. Fantastic! Yeah, I look forward to talking to you about it more when I'm down there. Uh, maybe get some, get get some more advice from you. Um, but yeah, we we could talk about that stuff in in person. But it looks like we have another. Do we have another tip here? Uh, monkey tipped dollar fifty. Super excited! Our community is growing. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean. Uh, Pavel, what, what's your feel? I mean, do you do you feel uh, what, from your vantage point? You've been in crypto for a very long time. Um, obviously, we see the delistings that are happening, but overall, how do you feel about Monero in terms of adoption and strength and actual? Like to be sincere, like like I, I can compare it because, like for example, Bitcoin community is really strong uh, uh, in Czech Republic, Slovakia, in Central Europe, uh, but. Like, uh, what is the best about Monero? And that's what I'm really, really sure is the community. Like, uh, I think the Monero, not not only community, but also like a conference, like a Monero conference. Like, uh, it's I really, I really enjoyed it. It's like uh, I, I think like a Monero conferences and Monero com communities are still some kind of underground. 
you know, like uh, uh, where trust is super important, for example. And yeah, so 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 to be sincere, I especially appreciate like a like a community in case of Monroe. It's the best. It's the really best. Yeah, and I, I can compare it because uh, I know really well like Bitcoin communities, but yeah, because uh, the reason it, the reason behind it is because uh, Monroe community people in Monroe community. Oh shit. He dropped. Oh, he's back. Okay. Okay. So, so the the reason why I appreciate and I think uh, appreciate about Monroe is the Monroe community, and the reason behind it, behind it is that people in Monroe community, all of them, they're sure they're sure two important values: privacy and freedom. Yeah. So, uh, and this is like a, for me, these two values, like freedom, and privacy, are the most important values in my life and that's why Monroe community is so close to me and also people in this community like a freedom and privacy and like a, there is no other crypto community that share these two values like a freedom and privacy and that's why i love like a Monroe and Monroe, Monroe community <laughs> fantastic fantastic a any anything you'd like to see in terms of development in the community like you're talking about Havino, we got we got xmr bazaar but just in general like what what do you think monero needs to 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 take it to the next level of growth and adoption what like what what what's missing or what needs to be done how do how do we continue to gr to grow i think i think now extra help we can we can we can get from the government when they start to introduce like uh, technocracy and um, and dystopia Un and unrealized like, so, so, unrealized yeah. capital gains will probably help. Exactly, I think I think I think like uh, everything that should be done for Monero community was done, and now I think to to increase to increase the community of Monero is just to just to wait for more dystopian society. <laughs> you know what I mean. Just to, just to, just, like, and it's basically, it's happening in Europe now. It's happening in, in the EU. Uh, for example, now in Slovakia, Slovak politicians introduced, like, a taxes from each banking transaction. So you send, like, a money, like, a, like you, you, you do, like, a, any banking transaction, you have to pay extra tax from each transaction. So now uh, it makes sense to use crypto. There is, like, a high incentive in Slovakia for people to use crypto because there is no tax and of course there is no way how to enforce tax from crypto uh so so thanks to our like a super crazy dystopian politician now we have the highest incentive to use crypto especially monero because it's anonymous, right? so so i think that the the next incentive to to boost the monero will come from from politicians, not from from Monero community. <laughs> yeah, they're doing a they're it's doing just, a hell of a job. They're doing a hell of a job yeah. of, of making Monero useful, right? <laughs> Ex exactly. We should just be patient and wait. You know, like uh, that's all. And it's happening. Uh, I think like uh, so many, so many, so many of my friends, they switch to Monero in Slovakia or Czech Republic, Central Europe, just because of that. You know, like uh, so. Yeah. So we have we should be we should be just patient and that's all. Don't worry. <laughs> Neolis tipped a uh, dollar twenty three. If XMR Bazaar ever becomes a decentralized anonymous marketplace in the future, I think Open Bazaar was an attempt at that. Mark my words, this will be revolutionary, just like Cavino Dex decentralize and anonymize all the things. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, right now we're just trying to build a bridge, right? We just want to make it as useful as possible to people to just trade uh goods and services peer to peer and uh I, I think i think it's a nice temporary bridge sure in the future if it could be decentralized and unstoppable but i think it serves serves a need as is and it gets us up and running right away uh but very very good points um we have 135 live viewers guys continue to like and share retweet let's get, get some we'll get some new people in here discovering monero topia the more we share it out there 
uh, especially on X. I think X is a great way to kind of find new libertarian oriented people can come discover Monerotopia. So please, please share it. Hit the like button, hit the retweet, get the word out. Pavel, any anything else you want to you want to mention now that we have you up on stage? And obviously, uh, you'll have the stage down at Monerotopia. But any, anything you want to get out there right now? I hope I hope I will see everybody at Monerotopia. <laughs> so definitely come and we'll see there. Yeah. Fantastic! Uh, I'll see you soon, man. It was great having you there last year. Always love seeing you at Monerocon, by the way. Um, uh, yeah, but br bring some spending Monero. You could do your holiday shopping. There will be the Monero accepting marketplace. So uh, that that's a big part of it as well. And I'll, I'll see you soon. Yeah, I think I think last year we did like a like a all Monero like a all Monero high regarding like a number of transactions. So don't worry. <laughs> oh During yeah. Monero top, oh yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> the, uh, the the marketplace the marketplace the woman that was running the marketplace said uh her vendors never made as much money as they made during monerotopia so people people were spending their monero obviously most of the vendors sold their monero at the end for pesos but some of them did keep it i was telling tux and you'll see when you're down there again this year there's some of the same vendors because i went down there last weekend and uh on various weekends you see some of the same vendors that were at monerotopia and they still have their Monero sticker and they still uh, have their app running and they're, and they're willing and ready to accept Monero payments. And I spoke to one gentleman who, who had, you know, he, he made, he, he saved uh, quite a bit of Monero from last Monero Topia. And he had said that he had made 50 additional transactions in Monero since the last Monero Topia where random people saw that he had the sticker and insisted on buying things off of him because he had, he accepted Monero. Very, very uh, encouraging to hear that. Yeah, we, yeah, like we should support like uh, all people who accept Monero. That's my like a uh, life hack, life approach. Like uh, exactly. everything in Monero, if it is possible, for sure. <laughs> if if yeah. you accept okay, Monero, so I'll be a customer. For the yeah, yeah. All right, we all right, Pavel. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you so much. We'll see you soon. See you in, in like three weeks. Adios.